Hi again everyone and thanks for joining our TMC live session for creative and digital media. Uh, shortly I'll pass you over to Ben, Katie and Yang who are part of our creative and digital media department at the Manchester College. Uh, tonight they're going to provide you with a showcase of the range of creative and digital media courses that we offer. If you've got any questions at any point you can ask them in the live Q&A box which is to the right of the screen and we'll answer as many questions as we can at the end uh, of the session. Uh, I'll now pass you over to Katie to get this session started. Over to you Katie. Hi everyone and um, my name is Katie and I teach um, animation and design at our Openshaw campus and um, so I'm going to be talking you through some of the um, courses that we teach um, and I'll also pass it to my colleagues who will explain a little bit more about their courses. Um, so our courses fall under two parts of the college. We have the Industry Excellence Academy, which is where our courses are co-created with a specific employer. Um, they input on our assignments, they do guest lectures, um, and they also help set up live briefs. So you get to take part in briefs that mirror what is happening in industry. We also have some of our courses that fall under our centre of excellence, which means that you work with a range of different employers and you get to do um, employability sessions where you talk about the industry in general and learn from lots of different relationships with different companies. I'm now going to pass you over to Yang, who's going to tell you more about the courses we teach at our Sheena Simon campus. Hi everyone, so my name's Yang. Um, so yeah, in terms of what we do um, at the Sheena campus, it's more film, TV and broadcast. Um, so what you can see now is our content creation and digital film production course, um, which is in sponsorship uh, with and um, in partnership with Pi Analysis. Um, and the nice thing about this particular course is that um, Again, we're partnered with Pi. Um, they tend to do sort of like kind of content creation and more like videos with like influencers, social media influencers. So those of you that you know love picking up your phone and the first thing you do is go to social media um, and check out what content is there. This is what we're going to be getting you to do. So you know, studio shoots is definitely one thing we're going to cover. So using the green screen, uh, lighting, being able to understand how reflectors work, um, but also sort of like camera setups. So you know, single multi-camera setup shoots. Um, but generally, the course um, is under University Arts London as well. So you know, we we do still have to kind of teach you how to plan and film and edit. Um, the nice thing is, is that we're teaching you those industry skills and using industry software. So Premiere Pro is definitely one you'll be using a lot. After Effects, Photoshop, InDesign, um, Audition. So, you know, it's not just sort of like kind of visual stuff, it's audio as well. So podcast is something that we will be introducing here. Um, another thing that we get to do is a little bit documentary, script writing, music video. So if that's something that you're interested in, this is what myself, Connor, Craig, Louise and Logan do. Um, who I work with um, as part of these courses. Um, Katie, will you do me a favour and move on to my next slide for me? So um, in terms of this particular one, we have uh, lovely Umar, who is um, kind of the founder of Pi Analysis. Um, and he's uh, kind of in this video, going to introduce a little bit about what they do with us. The learners that come through the Manchester College will gain industry insights, practical experiences from all our connections and our networks. They will be able to work with people who have worked with film, Sky, ITV, BBC, etc. Radio, TV and movies. They will gain industry insights which will strengthen their learning. So that's a little bit from Umar, as you as he was saying, we, we are working with the ITV, um, but again, it's more social influencers. Um, so, you know, I know a lot of you who, who will be at that age that love YouTube and then watching all those kind of things. This is what who we're going to be kind of create content with and for. OK, um, we've got a little video as well that we've kind of co-created with Pi Analysis as well. Katie, would you like to? Move the slide. Thank
Okay, so that's just a, a squidgy snippet of uh, what we do in terms of our courses. Um, our other one that we actually run alongside a Pi Analysis sponsored course is our broadcast film and television. So this is the one where actually you get to experiment a lot more. Um, and so therefore, you know, if you are into your film and you're inspired by the likes of Shane Meadows, Tarantino, those kind of people, then, you know, we're going to get experimenting with that side of things, script writing, short films, photography, because you know what? Photography is one of those ones that everyone thinks that it's just a still image, but actually you can use it as part of like the film process and making it sort of like within your um, exhibitions and your portfolios. Um, documentary journalism is another one that we cover as well within Pi Analysis, but also here, um, podcast creation and print. I think what's nice uh, with an, our team is that, you know, all of us have had industry experience. So like my background is more in sort of like advertising and design. Um, I know the likes of like Connor uh, still does documentaries and he's still sort of like a practicing practitioner of anything and Craig is and Louise and Logan as well as Ben and Katie as well. Um, so, you know, it's quite nice within our courses, you know, you do get those industry experience. Um, we're trying to create that more kind of industry feel to our courses as well. So, you know, we aren't just your teachers, we are your mentors, if anything. Um, and I always say to like my students, you know, as much as like you're used to saying miss and sir, you know, we prefer first name basis. So it means that actually you're you're referring to as like you would do in the industry as well. So, you know, I hate being called miss. OK, so Yang is always a good one and it would do in industry. So, you know, it's uh, one of those things that if you put in the hard work, we'll definitely sort of like make sure that you aim high and get into the industry. Um, and those that are shy and quiet, you know, we will work with you to build that confidence up and those skills so you will get noticed and you will sort of have the most amazing portfolio because of who you get to work with. OK, so moving on back to Katie. I'm going to pass you over to Ben now, who's going to talk about the courses at Openshaw, including games development. Hi, Ben. Sorry, You're ben. <laughs> there you go. Is that okay? Yeah. Hi. My name is um, Ben Elson. I teach computer game development for Manchester College. Um, also within that, that involves animation, 3D art, um, very technical things, very artistic things. It's a real mixed field. And, and hopefully what, what I'd like to get across today is that kind of diverse range of different things that we cover with what we do. Game development and, and game art is an incredible field. The industry is still 35 years old. It's a really new, fresh industry. And the UK has got a really thriving and very modern game development scene right now. And I want students to go off and be the forefront of that and be to the new ones who create the new games that we play, that I play, that the people around us play, whether it's on a handheld device, you sat on the bus or sat on a PC or sat on a console. So we're very lucky in games development. We've got a brand new industry partner now um, with the game production company, a Manchester based company. There's two young lads who, who started out um, at college level and have been one's been through university and, and now they want to work with us and come back and help us understand more and more about what they're doing and how they work. And what I like about them is they're a really great role model. Yanks mentioned about mentors and in industries as well. Um, and I think we're really good at teaching skills, lots of the skills you can see on there, which I can go through, but it's more about the application of these things as well and how you take them into a job role in the future, which is kind of the whole point of what we do is running courses that are more vocational, more hands on, more practical, because you want to go and have a career and work on it and make things and build things. Games is incredible. I love computer game development. I love computer game development more than I like playing the games themselves. You have to do so many different things, learn different, different pipelines and pathways. I'm sure you're familiar with software like Unreal Engine or even 3ds Max Blender. These are things that we use to make games and you can make little silly indie games, 2D games quickly, sort of throwaway games to these big AAA mega titles. Um, I'm not going to say Fortnite because I'm not a big fan, but it does kind of prove how open, accessible and amazing this industry is that we can have an impact on people's lives from all walks of life worldwide, whatever the language, whatever the background. Um, we need artists, we need technicians, we need people who understand what it means to sit and to play a game. We need people who've just got that game idea in their head that they've always wanted to get out. And I love working with those people who come in and they say, I've had an idea and I'm just not sure how to put it into practice. And after 
a year, they start to realize. And in the second year of the course, we tend to get a lot of people actually building games that they have an idea that came in as a little nugget and we turn it into something much more exciting than that. We do cover some really important industry skills. It's really important you've got those basic skills in place and um, whether it's from 3D or 2D or compositing visual effects. Um, we're very fortunate. We've got some really nice studios now that we work in. For those of you who understand, we're working on RTX cars and we're doing ray tracing this morning with my students. We're really able to push the boundaries of what we consider next gen to be. Um, and then we start to bring them back into our ideas again and start to say, right, how do we do this and, and what do we do? And I think what's really important with the games course and, and, and also coming the animation courses is, is none of this exists. None of this is there until we make it, we design it, we put it into life. And the, the act of going from nothing to something is really what's very exciting about this. OK, uh, I'd like to move on to the next course then that we um, we cover. So this is the motion design and animation course. Good use of a gift to illustrate what the course is all about. And um, this covers a full gamut of animation. Animation is one of Manchester's most thriving industries right now. Some of the most famous animations and we can name from TV into film into online come from Manchester and from companies that are in around the greater Manchester area. We're very lucky to work with one of them. We work with Flow Creative. I suggest you go and look at the website and see the work they do. It's everything from throwaway gifts to celebrate certain events to full on high end kind of industrial processes that go towards big um, big films, big animations. Again, all the things that you're used to seeing and doing and playing as well along the journey. You just need to want to make things move. You've got to have an idea about wanting to bring things to life. You don't have to be able to draw. The good thing about what we do is the computer will make up for some of the things that you're not so good at. So if you're not a natural drawer with a pencil, actually in something like Adobe Illustrator, you can find that you can illustrate and draw and create things using the computers. And I think the, the world of digital really needs people who maybe didn't think that they were going to be OK to do something to now come in and, and to mix this pot of talent and skill and ideas all up into one place. If you like to design characters, if you want to see things run around, if you want to do things that are fun or sometimes are quite deep and meaningful, the animation course is really brilliant from that. And I think a very modern form of animation course uses very high end software, but uses it for very, very different reasons. Um, and we need you to come and play with it with it and see what See what you can do and show us what you think, because we like to go out to clients to out to industry and look at what our students can do. Uh, we have another course as well. Okay, so we'll just mind stepping on the uh, slide. So this is a graphic design and digital communication course. Um, we don't want you to think this is a very traditional graphic design course. This is a very modern graphic design course. This has certain links with animation, certain links with uh, the broadcast, certain links with Pi, but essentially it's about branding, it's about typography, it's about illustration, it's about user interfaces, which is a really hot industry and it's, it's a big skills gap right now in the UK. And we, we get people in and start to say, right, we, we need things making for advertisers, for companies, for brands. They want logos, they want the animations, they want full campaigns, they need people to be able to pitch and to communicate. I think in that world, you need to have a sense of what's going on in the world right now. So if you're big on Instagram, if you're a big user of all the social media apps that are out there available, if you kind of get what's going on in Zeitgeist, come in towards, we'll work on some of the basic skills, the typography, the illustration, and then build it into the point where you can confidently put across your idea for a campaign for a major brand. We work with Creative Cow, who are another really exciting company who, who, who work on all kinds of advertising and branding as an agency. Um, and for those who, who, who don't necessarily know how it works, agencies are quite sort of um, sometimes they're quite small companies that do a lot of big things. And if you want a career where you want to do lots of different small jobs, graphic design communication is a really thriving place to go and do that right now and to put your imagination, and your creativity to the test. Next slide, please. OK, so the, the final course really that I want to talk about is the one that we call digital art animation for film. VFX and games. And, and this course brings in some of the bits and pieces of all of the courses that we've been speaking about under one umbrella and is really suitable maybe for people who aren't so set on what it is they want to do in the future, um, but want to do a very contemporary form of art, a very contemporary form of creative media where you know you will be playing with cameras, you will be playing with 3D, you might do some work in games, you'll do animation, you'll do 3D, 2D, but it'll give you a really good taster of maybe what it is you want to go on and do next. And I think 
every single course we have is about making things. It's about being productive. It's about having an output that you can put into a portfolio onto ArtStation, set up your own Facebook account that you use to show off your work with this idea of making high quality illustrations, assets and games straight away. And, and this course is, is really great at giving you the first chance to sort of understand a little bit about what's going on. Um, but I think it's really important that we understand, so just because you're studying a games course or an animation course doesn't mean that's it for the future. I know a lot of people do go into animation who study games and vice versa. And if you're just someone there who wants to get into making things you enjoy with working with computers or cameras, you know, stills cameras or video cameras, creative media is a really developing industry right now. We want you to come and work with us and to help us build the next stage of those industries. OK, so next up. Next slide, is next slide loaded? I, no, I do okay. love game design. Um, it is my first year of two. I chose this course because from growing up with playing video games, I've liked the idea of making my own. Um, and it's just really fun to like see how games are made, like what goes into actually making it and seeing how everything then all comes together. Well, I chose to study at the Manchester College because it's in there's many campuses and they're in really good locations, each one with the access to all the like supplies that we have, like all the computers, all the softwares and all that makes it all that bit better than other places. The most I've looked forward to and actually done is working on stuff like Unreal and Epic Games because it's like this they're like the things that run the games and how you make them we've been working on them since last year working on now so learning new things um learn how different things work and the thing i'm probably looking more forward to is creating like a full level for a game which is what we're doing this year over the course we've done work experience with a guy who's doing games uh, like mobile games like Angry Birds and stuff like that um, where he's then come in helped us come up with a mobile game idea and um, helped us design a marketing scheme and then just had us create like what it would look like on a screen. After college I see myself going to university to study games design because it's I think I see myself doing in the future to progress, maybe get on to making games. Um, being like the goal is just to see yourself on credits of a game. <laughs> but after college, it's either university or getting an apprenticeship, maybe in uh, games and even 3D modeling because we do a lot of that where we create buildings, um, we can create cars sometimes. So it's not just like a games business you can go into. I would recommend the Manchester College for someone who is leaving um, like high school because it's like there's many campuses. It's easy to get to uh, all the teachers and tutors are really nice. Um, they have good like supplies and everything. So it helps you get through your course as easy as it can be. Brilliant, thank you very much. That was really good. Katie, um, do you want to go over some of the partners and the companies that we work with alongside our courses? Yeah, OK, so this um, slide gives you a really good um, idea of quite a lot of the companies we've worked with over the last couple of years. And this is a mixture of employers that have come in and helped set briefs with us. So we've got our partners up there, Flow, Pi, Cow, the games production company. But we also have a lot of companies we work with where we they set us briefs um, and they are real live clients so we actually produce work and and designs and branding that then companies go on to use we work a lot with charities so last year we did um some work with bernardo's where the yeah the students um, made animations and films that bernardo's have actually used with their um with their um clients and um, also we do a, a range of 
pro projects with a charity called Ideas Foundation. And Ideas Foundation um, work with us to help put together a series of challenges. The students um, undertake a video CV where they talk about why they want to work in the creative industries. And they also take part in a live brief. And those live briefs have been with companies like 20th Century Fox, and McCann, which is a massive advertising agency based in Manchester. Um, and from those two activities, the media camp and the video, some of our students are selected to be given an industry mentor and then they get to meet their mentor either face to face or currently virtually. And their mentor gives them advice on things like preparing their portfolio, the job opportunities that they can do in industry and just giving them insight really into what it's like to work in industry, because a lot of the job roles that people are doing now in industry students aren't necessarily aware of. So having that mentor, that person who's doing the job you might want to do in the future is really good because you can find out about potential options for your own career, what kinds of courses to choose at university and just generally find out more about the creative industries. We also, um, through Ideas Foundation, have opportunities to open up to um, go and do things like go down to Facebook in London um, and spend time in their offices and things like that. So a lot of our opportunities are opened up through working with our Ideas Foundation. Um, we also have, as um, we've mentioned before, our four partner um, courses specific to creative media. Um, and these are the courses that actually help us write our curriculum. So the things we teach in class, the assignments we set and the projects we do and the skills that we help you develop have been directly influenced by companies who are already doing the things you want to do in the future. So if you want to be a games designer and you want to make games assets, you can work with the games production company and the assets that students have made in class with Ben have actually gone into the game and they've been used in the game that um, the, sh the, the company are working on. So it's not just about creating assets for a client. You can also contribute to your actual employer partners content that they are making live. So it's really exciting to be able to work with these companies. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to show you some examples of student work. This is a show reel of work produced at our Openshaw campus. So it's work from our games and um, design, games development students, our animation students and our digital design and graphic design students. So it's just kind of an overall view at the sorts of things that you'll be creating on the course. And every single thing in this show reel has been created by students. So it's using the skills we teach in class. So I'll just set that playing. you back to our marketing team who will be able to take you through some of the questions that you've hopefully posted in the chat for us. Yeah that's fantastic thank you Katie and thanks Ben and, and Yang as well um, we've had loads of fantastic questions through actually so we've got quite a few to go through so uh, thank you everyone for your questions uh, this evening. Uh, the first one is I think it came through when when Yang, Yang was uh, talking so I think she might be the best to answer it. Um, it was regarding um, 
the uh, let me just double check for it. Sorry. Um, so do we have to do some other work? Or basically, can we? This person in particular doesn't particularly like making scripts. So do they have to do all of that that work or is that something they can skip? Can they choose different different um, areas of the of the course? Um, OK, so the, the nice thing is, is that I find that a lot of my students say they don't like doing things. OK, and then when they give it a go, they actually change their minds about it. So script writing might not be your thing now, but I always say give it a go. Um, I would prefer if you did go skipping things because this is it, it's that experience that you have. Um, you will actually eventually maybe like it, but you want need to understand the process of it as well. So giving it actually a go may change your mind. It may not. And that's cool. If it doesn't change your mind, that's not a problem, but at least you've given it a go. But also it means that you understand the process as well, because if ever you were sort of like kind of storyboarding from a script, you're going to need to understand the action side of it. You're going to need to understand where um, the kind of discussions are, where it might be that you've got to look at it and go, oh, that could do with a fade in, that could do with a fade out, um, or it could be that actually I'd have a medium close up or a close up of that. If you don't understand how a script works and actually sitting there and reading through it and also doing read throughs are, are, are so important to the process of being able to sort of like kind of create something, because even though you have your ideas, that's amazing, but also it may be that someone else might go, oh, whatever your name is, um, <laughs> you might actually have different ideas and they might suggest things to you um, that will help you sort of get better at the process as well, but also to add to your ideas. Um, so I always say give everything a go. Fantastic. Uh, there's a, a similar question that came through actually went during Ben's session and I, I would imagine it's a similar answer, um, but it was um, I'm, I'm not the best at drawing. Is there a, is there a possible way to skip that course or is it is it a part of the course? <laughs> Same question I mean, basically. Yeah, I, I get this a lot. And to, to confess, I'm not if you if you give me a pencil and a piece of paper and, and you know, people who work with will tell you all the time, I'm not a natural pencil artist, you know, or I don't do a lot of painting. I'm a digital artist. I've learned to use tools to do things in a different way. I think what what Yang said is really important about the idea of being willing to try things out. And the great thing about what we do is, is you can fail and, and make loads of mistakes and messes and do horrible work. And it's still OK because we're all about finding what it is that you do and then also sort of maybe working backwards. So think about what the end result is and then finding a way to get to that from there. So we will do digital illustration and I will do sketching and thumbnails. Um, I'm not expecting to take, you know, you know, dodgy drawings with a pencil and stick them up on the wall and go, right, we're an artist now. It's about a process. It's about thinking and, and I think often the term communication gets really misunderstood in our world. People think you know writing is communication but there's loads of ways for people to communicate. We communicate through pictures and through gameplay and through um, maybe maybe not doing things in the most obvious way. So once you become in that world and once you understand that you know doing things wrong is brilliant because you get to learn about yourself about something very particular or something more wider then, then we, that's a really really good thing and I I say to my students that are constantly asking questions or get the hands up or, or doesn't work. That's fantastic because it means you're trying these things out. Um, but yeah, the, don't worry about too much. We, we will help you draw, but we don't kind of we don't we don't give you an exam on drawing. It's not that it's not that important to us. Fantastic. OK, and there's just, uh, a question again about drawing, I suppose, and we've had a few questions about sort of software and hardware that students will use. And um, this particular question is, um, would we would we have to use a mouse to draw and animate or, or would we be able to use iPads with a stylus and, and graphics tablets, that kind of thing? Shall I carry on? Because I'm on, I'm on mute and it's working. Um, we use whatever it takes to get the job done. We don't dictate. Um, I have students who love working with graphics tablets and, and we have some really good quality graphics tablets that we encourage people to use. And again, we encourage you to try it. Um, but some people actually do brilliant work, work with a mouse. And I think in this in this very sort of modern working remotely age, we're, we're really open to new and different ways of doing things. And if you're communicating your ideas and it's not necessarily the way that I thought it was going to be, I'm never going to criticise a person for doing that. We encourage imaginative thinking, creativity, and, and often that comes down to not just what it is you're doing, but how you do it as well. Um, we're all big users of the apps that we we all use and see. You know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of some of the stuff that Adobe put out. Some of it's free, some of it is behind the paywall. And um, there's some amazing free software that's released now that we can use. And 
I, I maintain if you if you put something in front of us that makes us go wow it, it doesn't matter to me how it's made or what the the, the process was with which to do that okay fab. um again similar similar question in terms of um software i suppose uh, and i think this again came through on during yang's um course dis discussion um do you do you teach us with uh, do you sorry do you teach us web web developing or photoshop is that part of any of the courses i would imagine it's part of the graphic design course potentially but <laughs> which i am for that one and um, yeah so on our um our digital design course, our graphic design course, we do teach web and app prototyping, but we don't code things. So we sort of design what it's going to look like, design where you would click and what colour you would use to indicate to the user where they need to go. And then we prototype that. But then in industry, those two things would be two separate um, sort of parts of the process as well. So we would have designers who design the front end and then you'd pass that to coders and develop who would build it and make it work. And we mirror that on our courses. So we take that to sort of prototype level and then in the industry that would be then passed on to a developer who would build it. Um, and we do teach Photoshop as well. That's a big part of it. Our main um, two pieces of graphics software are Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. And um, people tend to be more familiar with Photoshop. Um, and Adobe Illustrator is a partner program that, that works really well as part of the Adobe Suite with that. So yes, we do teach Photoshop. We use it for all sorts of things on pretty much, I think it's probably it's Photoshop in every single course, actually. It's probably the one software we do use across every single pathway, whether that's to create graphic design or backgrounds for animations or textures for games, or um, we use it on our um, film course as well to create content and all sorts of different things to put into our videos. So yeah, we use Photoshop a lot. Okay, fantastic. Um, a question here, just more more generally, I suppose. How many how many hours do you do you tend to spend in college per week? And now, obviously, I would imagine that's maybe slightly different at the moment. But if I suppose if you know what's a, what's your your normal year like, and what's maybe what's it like this year? Should I answer that one as well? Um, so um, a normal year, your course, you would be in college for two and a half days a week um, with taught sessions. Um, and then we expect you to kind of do pretty much the same amount at home. Um, as we've mentioned lots of times, all our courses are project based. So you, we don't necessarily set sort of specific homeworks every single week, but we expect you to continue working on your projects, developing your skills, researching and investigating your subject, all of that sort of stuff. Um, at the moment, um, our timetable is that you're in one day every two weeks and the rest of your timetable is being taught online um, and we're hoping that as sort of things with the pandemic ease off that, that we'll have a bigger percentage of that face to face. So what we're doing at the moment is we're prioritising all your skills and your software and your um, practical work when you're in college and a lot of the surrounding supporting work such as research, evaluations and reflections, planning, anything that can be done, you know, sort of by drawing or typing or writing or um, or can be done um, without specialist software that's being done at home. And then when you're in class, we can do the stuff that where you get to use all the shiny equipment and skills and the stuff that you might not have access to um, in the home environment. Fantastic. OK, um, there's a couple of questions um, about university uh, after studying on this course. So uh, what can I go on to study at university after studying the course? And also how many UCAS points are these kind of courses? generally worth? I'll answer that one to start off with and I'll throw that to Ben and Yang as well because it does really depend on which pathway you're doing um, but the general answer to what you can study is um, it's really really broad and varied. I've had students go on from an animation course for example to do animation which would make sense or the graphic design course to do graphic design and um, but the world of media is so wide and broad it often means that students can, can maybe move into a slightly different area of media even though that's not necessarily what they've studied at college so um, I've had students from the animation course go on to study things like animation obviously but things like VFX um, and even things like creative writing so they can take their creative skills um, from writing scripts and stories for animation and then go on to study that in more depth. The brilliant thing about our qualification is we can tailor it to your sort of area of interest so you might be on an animation course and you might all start on that animation course trying lots of different areas of animation. As the two years go on, you might find that you really love doing concept art. And so you want to just create concept art all day, every day, and you will end up doing more of that. Or the person next to you might be more interested in the actual animation, the movement, and then someone else on the course might enjoy writing the stories. And you're all three on the same course, but you're all going down your own special path. And that would normally lead on to what you apply for at university. Um, our courses are worth, um, depending on the grade you get, 
the same as three A levels. So if you get a distinction on our um, extended diploma, our two year course, that is worth 168 UCAS points, which is the same as if you got three A stars at A level. So it's a really big, really, really high um, number of UCAS points for the full um, extended diploma. If you were to get a merit, you would get the equivalent of ABB at A level or 120 UCAS points. And if you were to get a pass, you would get 68 UCAS points, which is the equivalent of three Cs at A level. So our courses are worth a good chunk of UCAS points. The majority of universities ask for a minimum of a merit grade on our UAL um, extended diploma. So if you get a merit or a distinction, you'd be able to get onto most creative courses at university. And um, I'll pass you over to Ben because he'll be able to talk a little bit more about the kind of options following the games course. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, um, there's a, a big history of university for creative courses that's going back a long, long period of time. Um, we're at a massive period of change right now. And, you know, there's not, if I'm just really honest, there's, there's not loads and loads of apprenticeships in the same way, maybe that there is in construction, maybe that there's the same way in other areas. What, what we do have is a, a very kind of open attitude towards being um, imaginative and, and being entrepreneurial in how we work. The, 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 majority of students if I was to name them have gone on and done big things I've had students go on to work for some of the major games companies now in the UK and abroad and so I've got students won an Emmy for Netflix they, they did go to university because three further years of getting better at these things um, can help someone build a portfolio because actually to be honest the qualifications are really good and they help you progress but what you can do what you can show you you can do is is as important and in some cases more important, particularly when it comes to employment. Um, in my world of games, there's, there's, a, there's a, a real lack of kind of um, people at post college saying actually, you know, come and do this, this apprenticeship with us. But what there is, is actually a really thriving indie small scene that I don't think is matched in many other fields. The partner um, course for the games course, one of the students did go to university and is doing really well and the other one didn't set up his own company and is doing even, even better. So, um, Sometimes it's a bit about your state of where you're at and what you want to do and how you you know want to um, spend your next few years. Do you want to be building something? In which case, there's loads of support, there's loads of role models, there's loads of mentors. We've got them. Or do you want to go to university and, and do it in a different way? And there are loads of things changing in the education world right now. And the moment they change, the moment there's an opportunity, we make sure every single person gets to see that opportunity and gets to think, is this the right thing for me? And I think. Another great thing about our UAL courses is we make your progression, your future part of the course. We, we don't just have a one hour chat with you and go right and do a UCAS form. We, we do it over the entirety of the second year. We, I actually get all my students to apply for a job to, as they come towards the end of the year to go through that experience. And we were really surprised when one got offered an interview at a really major Grand Theft Auto made the you know the game um, major major company. So we, we try things and we support you through it. And I think something I do a lot as well is when you finish, you know, I still want to hear from people. I still want to help people out. I will put you in contact with former students who've gone on to work. I've got a real good network now of people of sort of different tiers and ages to help you through and to build communities. We Manchester's a great city for all of this because there's there's a serious communities that want to support and help each other and I'm not a big Facebook user but one of the best things that there is is a kind of secret community on Facebook of indie game developers and it's it's a really amazing world to be a part of we need to show you that world and whilst we can teach you skills and software we can talk about equipment and all this sort of stuff there's also helping you understand how you move on into this world so you can have a lifelong career in it should you want to Fantastic, that's great, and that covers one of the other questions we've had a little bit about, you know, the work experience and, and progression onto the onto uh, into the work world of work side of things as well. So that's fantastic. Thanks, uh, thanks both. Um, next question was regarding what grades they need to um, to get into an animation course. So coming from high school, what what grades do they require for for an animation course? Shall I answer that one? Yeah. <laughs> so the courses we've taught you through today are all on our level three. Um, which is the same as A-levels, it's the same level as A-levels. So to get onto our level three courses, we require you to have four GCSEs, grade four and above, including English. Um, if you haven't got your maths, you would need to resit that alongside your level three, um, because you do need that GCSE maths, particularly for university, and a lot of jobs and apprenticeships also ask for it as well. If for any reason you didn't get your four GCSEs grade four and above at grade C, we do have a programme of lower level courses. So that would normally involve you enrolling on our level two course, which would mean an extra year at college, 
you would do the level two course for a year while you reset your English and your maths maybe as well if you needed both of them and then you would come on to level three with us um, and you would get to specialise in either games or animation or digital graphic design or um, content creation or even film. So you'd specialise in one of those courses we've mentioned at level three. If you did do our level two, um, and we also do have level one and even an entry three programme. So depending on your GCSE results and your courses, your qualifications from school, you can pretty much come on to any level with us, which is the really good thing. The only thing you have to bear in mind is the courses get more specialised the higher the level. So if you came on to our entry three or level one courses, you would be doing a little bit of creative media, but you would also learn some business and some computing skills alongside. If you came onto us onto our level two course, you would specialise in creative media, but you do a little bit of lots of types of creative media. So all the courses we've mentioned, you try a little bit of animation, a little bit of film, a little bit of editing, a little bit of games with the aim to specialising when you get onto level three. So we do ask for those four GCSEs, grade four and above, but if you haven't got them, you just have a slightly different entry point into the college and you would still get to specialise. It might just mean doing an extra year or two with us. And what we often find is some of our strongest level three students are those who've maybe come to us at level two or even level one because they've spent an extra year or two in college and they've got extra time to basically learn those skills and learn how to be a, a creative media student. Fantastic, that's great. Um, question about a specific course here. So do, do we do um, digital art and, and animation for film via, via, VFX and games at Northern Dunn? That sounds like two courses to me, but I don't know if it is. I'll send that over to Ben. Um, essentially, yes, it is at Northern Dunn. Um, it, it, it isn't true courses as such. What it is, is, is a um, probably a slightly more flexible course in terms of teaching those basic skills, but being more open to applying them to things that you would like to go on and do. Um, first year being, all of our courses are really kind of, the first year is very experimental, playful, getting your feet in, trying stuff, learning what stuff is and, and getting a really strong foundation in this world. And then all of our second year courses allow you to take that and do more with it. And then we push you further in that area. I've, I've been sat in a classroom today with second year game students and some of them are doing this project, which is around uh, character art in 3D. Some are doing it in 2D, some are doing a mixture. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm exhausted, but I've had a lot of fun today because what we want to do really is to is to not just dictate what we do, but to show you the fundamentals and then support you to go through that force. I know um, the person who runs that course, Geo, is, is, is really strong on ensuring that the students move onwards and upwards from there. So I think I think it's, it's a great course to do. If, obviously, if you're living around Northern, then it's, it's, a, it's a really good choice for you. Um, but the, the best thing to do probably would be to, to contact us and we can arrange a one-to-one -one interview and go over what it is you want to do and, and see if we can map that into, into how we work as well. Brilliant. Okay. Um, talking about, um, well, sort of from a graphics point of view, actually, um, you've got someone that's, that's currently doing graphics in school. Um, if they pass that exam, would they be able to potentially progress onto 3D animation type course? Uh, oh, yeah. I, I, um, I have had people, I, I also teach d degree level this stuff as well, particularly in 3D. And whatever level whatever stage you're at whether you're starting out on a college course or you're finishing degree course and um, it's more important that you've got this positive attitude than anything else and um, if you've got prior knowledge i'll take it into account but there might be something we do slightly differently or that needs to be done in a certain way for it to be a professional way of working and um, whereas if you're coming fresh and open-minded and determined and um, you can obviously you know learn the same as everybody else and in some cases excel beyond that and that's something that i see at all levels and um you know, just like I said, that desire to make and to create. I, I'm not too concerned what the background really is, as long as you've got that drive in which to do so. And what I would say is to have to picked out 3D animation is is it's my favourite thing that I do. It's exciting and and different and different styles and all sorts. So yeah, please please come and we'll get started straight away. Brilliant. And I think we've just got the last last couple of questions. Possibly the last question here. Uh, it goes back to the software we we're talking about earlier. Um, do we provide access to, to creative Adobe packages um, to students or do they have to purchase it themselves? That's the firework of a question right now, that one. Go on, Yang, you can have that one. 
You just on mute at the moment, yeah. Oh, there you go. I'm on muted, I'm muting now. No, I'm <laughs> on mute. That's good. Um, so the nice thing about Adobe, um, so you know, I tend to think with current climate, um, we do actually have the software in college. Um, but what it is is that it, it, you can have access to a laptop and, and software as well. Um, but what we're trying to do is Part of UAL, the nice thing is, is that it's all about kind of playing. Um, so we're actually trying to encourage people, especially because, you know, smartphones, we have actually got the Adobe sort of like kind of, I don't know whether you can uh, see that. Oh, I've disappeared. Oh, oh no, <laughs> can't see it. Never mind. Um, but I will sort of like put this down and I will put my email address down so you can actually ask me this. But there are the Adobe sort of like kind of apps for phones and they're free. So the likes of sort of like Adobe Spark, uh, Premiere Rush. So, you know, I've got my students recently to kind of do a sequence shoot. And um, so one actually in college with Premiere Pro and then you've got the one uh, on your phone, which is Premiere Rush. Um, and I, I actually want them to compare and contrast um, how it is to film on a mobile phone. Because you know what? Mobile phone are amazing these days they're kind of better than an actual digital slr sometimes shouldn't say that Shh. Um, but <laughs> it is one of those things that i just want you to experiment to play and to have a go at things um because not everyone has um access to like a digital slr when they're at home but the nice thing is is that we will happily loan you the cameras um and we'll happily loan you a tripod the gimbals um i'm trying to think what else i've got in my my kit cupboard um recorders for like your podcasting and what have you um so in terms of kit um you can actually um purchase the student one which is i think 16 20 for a month for the whole adobe sort of like kind of um suite creative suite so that has your photoshop your premiere pro um after effects indesign um animate audition all of those side of things and that's 16.24 a month um but we do sort of encourage our students to come into co you know covid being these days and what have you and um trying to keep you in bubbles but you are allowed to come into college um and work on um your work as well you know you can book in in the library um but i think also what we're trying to do is is sort of like kind of arrange sessions where actually you could come in um with the tutors um to, to be able to work on what you need to do so um you know yes um you can have there are apps that you can get for free that we try and get you encourage you to use on on your phone um but in terms of the software um it is one of those things that unfortunately we 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 don't give it out um but you can actually purchase it for 16.24 a month um but we do have sort of like kind of um bursaries as well where laptops and the software will be on there so um but support's always great here student support and student services so if you do on and you are struggling for like a computer um or access to things we do sort of like kind of have that option as well to be able to help you guys out okay fantastic that's great yeah and yeah like you say i think um it's one of those things that we can you know really really support people with I suppose from that from that point of view so lovely and um, that seems like all the questions we've got for this evening so uh, thanks Ben, Yang and Katie um, for all your advice and information there. it was really useful really um, really good session uh, and thank you everyone for joining us this evening for, for TMC Live uh, Creative and Digital Media and um, just to let you know we do have more TMC Live events running until Thursday so if you are interested in any other subject areas or anything else to do with the Manchester College then please visit our website TMC ac.uk forward slash tmc live and you can register for some more some more of our sessions uh, tomorrow and on thursday if you'd like to apply to the manchester college for 2021 then we are now ac accepting applications so please do visit the website tmc.ac.uk or if you'd like to speak to someone this evening about applying or you'd like some more information our school liaison team are available until eight o'clock and they're there waiting to take your call so their number is 0161 674 three four nine six and um, if you'd like to enroll for this year then we do still have some places available so um, our enrollment team are available for you to speak to uh, by calling 0161 674 1080 and then lastly uh, for learners with with special educational needs and disabilities we also have a transition team who are on hand um, to help you you know with the move from school to college and to make it a, a positive experience for you um, and you can contact them by emailing transition team at tmc.acu.uk um, 
So that's everything for this evening. I'd just like to thank you all again for joining us and we hope you have a very good evening. Thank you. Mm -hmm.